All right, so in this video, we're going to be talking about properties and some uses of the dot product, okay? So first, we're going to get the properties of, of finding the dot product out of the way, okay? So first, we have that if you dot the, the same vector, okay, with itself, so you have a dot a, that's equal to the magnitude of that vector squared. Okay, now I have a better way to kind of prove this in just a second here, but I might as well prove it for you anyway, uh, like this, and actually do it out. For the left side of this equation, we have 1, 3, dot 1, 3. Okay, if you dot this, we get 1 times 1 is 1, plus 3 times 3 is 9, and you get 10. So we should get 10 on the right side, okay? So... If we find the magnitude of A, what that ends up being is 1 squared plus 3 squared. And of course, that equals rad 10. And you have to square that still. Okay? So you have to square this because of that square right there. And that equals 10. So you see there that those are equal. Next, we have that A dot B is the same exact thing as if you were to do b dot a. Okay, it's the same exact thing. Now, remember, I mean, if you have like a one comma three dot two comma two or something like that, it doesn't matter if it's two comma two dot one comma three, okay? All you're really doing here is, is multiplying your first set of components, okay? It doesn't matter if two comes before one, they're still gonna get multiplied together. You know what I'm saying? So if I write it like this, 2 comma 2 dot 1 comma 3, okay, I'm still going to be multiplying this 2 and the 1, okay, it doesn't really matter if it's 1 times 2 or if it's 2 times 1, I get the same exact thing. So this holds true. Now next, we have that A dot B plus C equals vector a dot b plus a dot c. All right, now this is more of a, of a longer one to prove, um, you know, not too long, but I want to keep this video a little shorter. So, you know, you can just see here, though, that you can distribute uh, a dot product through. So you can do, you know, a dot b and a dot c, and then just add those dot products together to get your, your this, this side of the equation, okay? So next we have, we have more of kind of just moving this, this dot around, okay, with, with now with a constant, okay, that, that or a scalar rather, uh, C, okay, C, C is a scalar here. You can see it doesn't have the vector symbol over it. And we can put this, this scalar anywhere. It can be attached to A, and then you can dot it with B. It can be, it can be outside of the dot product. It can be a dot C times B, you know? You're still going to get the same exact thing. All right? Lastly, we have that if you dot anything with zero, it's gonna equal zero, okay? So if you had your, we said your A is one comma three, okay, and you dot it with zero comma zero, okay, because that's what uh, the, the zero vector is, Okay, you get 1 times 0 is 0, plus 3 times 0, which is 0. Okay, you see that it equals 0. All right, so now here's, here's kind of more of the uses of the dot product. Okay, this is something that's actually really useful uh, in, in like physics and stuff. And it's useful in Calculus 3 too, but I've used it, I think, more in physics. All right, now if theta is the angle between vectors A and B, then you basically have that a dot b is equal to the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b times cosine theta, okay? So you're able to find the angle between vectors a and b by dotting a and b and then dividing by the magnitudes of each, okay? So you can, and here, before I actually solve for cosine theta here, because that's what I'm about to do, you can see that if we were to do a dot a, which was one of the uh, one of the properties from before. Okay, if you were to do this, and this is kind of the, the other proof that I was talking about, 
you now have the magnitude of A times the magnitude of A times cosine of, well, what's your angle going to be? Well, it's the same vector, so the angle between them is 0. Cosine of 0 is 1. You end up getting the magnitude of A squared. So there's kind of a little bit of a better proof, I guess. Anyway, solving for cosine here, we get that cosine theta is equal to a dot b over the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b. Now, this is something that you should definitely know. Okay, You're able to find the angle of two vectors with the dot product and dividing by the magnitude of each vector. Okay, And those are being multiplied together. All right. So we'll do one quick example of this. All right, we want to find the angle between 2, 3, and 1, 2. Okay, let's call this, say, vector A and vector B. All right, so if we want to find the angle between these two vectors, let's just use this formula that we have up here. We're going to say cosine theta equals 2, 3, dot, 1, 2, and that's going to be over the magnitude of 2, 3, times the magnitude of 1, 2. All right, so we got, we got to find all these now. Okay, let's first do the dot product. We'll do that down here. We have 2, 3, dot, 1, 2. Now, if we're dotting this, we have a 2 times 1 plus a 3 times 2. Okay, so we have a 2 times 1 plus a 3 times 2. That's a 2 plus 6, and that's 8. Okay, so that is what our top piece is going to be. We also need to find the magnitude of 2 comma 3. All right, so let's do that right here. We have the square root of 2 squared plus 3 squared. And that's going to equal well, 4 plus 9, and that's rad 13. And then we'll do the magnitude of 1 comma 2. Okay, that's the square root of 1 squared plus 2 squared, and that's going to be equal to rad 5, All right? So that's going to be your bottom piece, rad 13 and rad 5, all right? So let's get all this extra work out of the way and focus on that. So that is what we end up with, all right? Now, we can simplify this a little bit by combining these radicals and getting 8 over the square root of 13 times 5. What did I have that down as? 65. All right, so now all we have to do is take the inverse cosine of each side, okay? And we get that theta is equal to the inverse cosine of 8 over rad 65, and there you go. That's your answer, all right? So just one more thing that we're going to do, and then this video will be good. So the last thing that we're going to touch on is that two vectors are orthogonal if you have that the dot product of them is zero, okay? Now, what does orthogonal mean? That's a, that's a new term for us. Well, orthogonal means basically just, it's another word for perpendicular, just for our purposes, okay? That's a word that you're gonna see come up a lot in Calc 3, okay, and that's what that means. Now, why does this happen? Well, remember that the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times cosine of theta equals a dot B. Okay? If we have something that is that is orthogonal, if we have two vectors that are, that are orthogonal, what you're going to get is whatever the magnitude of A is times whatever the magnitude of B is times cosine of pi over 2. So if you have two vectors that are orthogonal, they're going to have an angle of pi over 2. Okay? And that makes this whole side 0 which means that you have to have that a dot b equals zero. Okay, so that's how you can tell if two vectors are orthogonal. All right, and we're gonna be doing some examples of, of all of this stuff. We're gonna be doing more examples with all that in the next video, so uh, I'll see you soon. So if this video helped you, make sure to leave a like and subscribe by clicking my icon in the top left. You can also view the playlist for vectors and the geometry of space in the next video in the series. Lastly, if these videos are really helping you and you would like to consider supporting me, I have my Patreon linked in the description down below, along with some other pretty cool links that you should definitely check out. See you soon.